and hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So in the previous video we covered user input. Today we'll be covering if statements, comparison operators and all of the, that jazz. So remember in data touch when I told you you can have something like a true or false. This is where we'll be using these booleans. So let's get started. So let's first learn comparison operators. Let's go print, and let's say uh, let's say z here. We can say five uh, is equal or compared to five. Now, what is the what's the difference here? So this says z is equal to this, but this says or this actually asks is this equal to this? This is what this one asks. This one says. That's the difference. This one compares. That's what's called comparison operator. So if we say Z, then we go here teaching. It says true. Because 5 is 5. 5 is equal to 5. Now if we were to go 5 and then in quotation marks 5, what will we get? We get false. Because this is a string. This is not integer. So, but if we were to go like this, and then just boom. Okay, and uh, now we get true because both of them are strings and both of them return the same thing. Go 5, 1, that's going to return false because 5, 1 is not the same as 5. So this just basically compares things. You can, you can even compare true and false. So if false is equal to false, is false equal to false? As seen, yes, it is. That's why it returns true. And then you also have your... Uh, your uh, bigger than and smaller than, so that doesn't really work with true or false that well. So let's go something like a, well, let's go x equal equal y. We can do that, we can use variables as well. So if we go here, it says false because true is not the same as false. Yes is not no. It's the same as if someone goes, hey, can I burn your house down? Yes is definitely not the same as no there. There's the same here. So they so we ask is yes the same as that as no? Then it says no, it is not. False is no. So yeah. So then we can do something like is five bigger than seven? It's going to return false because seven is bigger than five. Also we can do that and then now it will be showing to the bigger one, so then we return true. So yeah, that's bigger than or smaller than. You can also use bigger than or smaller than with uh, with strings. So we can do something like uh, our own, and we can compare it to our own. Now, if we do that, it returns false. But if we swap them around, it returns true. So why 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 is this happening? Well, I'm going to dive too deep into this because I've covered this so many times on my channel, but. There's something called ASCII character values. And basically these ASCII values are basically the form of a letter. So let, let me talk to you like this. Show me show it to you like it. So we have a capital letter A. In computer language, capital letter A is actually equal to 65. So it's actually a number. And then in the first one we get R. And R in computer language is 114. And then we have O, which is the same as 111. Then we go here. And then we have A, which is equal to 65. So we just did this one basically somewhat. And then we have lowercase a, which is equal to 97. And then we have R, which is equal to... 114. This might look random, but it actually works like this. A is equal to 97. B is equal to 98. The C is equal to 99. And it continues like that until until the alphabet ends. There's also things like spaces. Space itself is equal to 32. And then you have the capital letter A, so A is equal to 65. And B is equal to um, 66. 
and C is, big C, is equal to 67. So basically all the characters you can have inside of here, all the string characters, they have their own ASCII value. And that's how they compare it. They sort of actually compare the sizes of the values. So it's like, okay, these two are the same. Then it goes here to R and A, and it's like, ooh. But you see, A is smaller than R. So, so it's 65 plus 114 and 65 plus 97. And as you can see, this one would then be bigger than this one. So then if we run this, we get true. Okay, so that's basics of what you need to know about comparison. Now let's get to if statements. So an if statement is basically checks if something is something. So let's say um, if uh, let's say 65 is bigger than 10, then so you use a colon and then you have to indent. Now this is indention. It's a tab or a space, whichever you want, but indenting in Python is super important. We'll get to that right now. So we go print and we say uh, 65 is, oh gosh, 65 is bigger. And if we run this, it says 65 is bigger. Now if we were to flip this around, that code would not execute. It will not display the Thing. So this only executes if it returns true. The same if we do this. If we say if true, true, then execute the code. And it is true, of course. And you say if false, they're not going to execute it. Why? Because this will only execute if the statement up here is true. And now if we were to remove that, uh, that indention, and we were to run the code, it's going to give an error like, Wait, 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 it expected an indention block. We were like, wait, what? Uh, well, this if statement isn't being completed. So, of course, you can use a space if you want. If you run that, you still get a good output. Let's just make this true. And you go like that, and you see it's true. But as soon as you add another space there, you get the same output, but now, now you have to remember, if you want to execute something else, it has to be at the same space, so if you can go print test, and now if you run that, it's going to say print test, but as soon as you remove a space, like that, it's going to be like, uh, wait, what? It's like, unintent does not match any outer indentation level. And that's a very complicated thing to understand, but these two are not the same then. Because this is two space, I can see there's two dots. That is a space. That's two spaces. This one is one dot. That is why it's actually recommended to use the tab button, and you can tab it up because it's just so much easier. And if you go like this, and you can see it actually gives a line that says, "Hey, this is a, a an entire tab." We can do this, and nice. Now take note: if we do this, it will still execute perfectly fine. And if we turn this true into false. It's going to run the test still. Why is that? Because only this is part of the if statement. Only this part right here. If I were to indent this again, then nothing would run. Because then all of this is part of the if statement. As you can see, as soon as you indent it, it becomes part of the if statement. But take note, as soon as you stop indenting something and you indent it again, let's make this uh, 2222, then it won't work. Because then you have just broken the indention. So it's an unexpected indent. So you can see they're like, what? They, because they're going to like, okay, so they stopped with the if statement, and now they're executing something, then there's suddenly a, 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 an intention, like, what's going on here? So yeah, indenting is very important in Python, and it's only going to get more important from here. Of course, you can also do like multiple tabs if you want, but we were recommended, because that's just going to make things confusing. Okay, so let's just bring all the back. Now you have your if else statement. So let's make this um, x is equal to 5 and let's go y is equal to 9. So if x is bigger than y, which should return false because 5 is not bigger than 9, then we can unintend and say else and we can say print 
uh, x is smaller than y and here we can say uh, x is bigger than y have you run this? it says x is smaller than y because it's going to run this and say like oh no that's this, this, this is false so it's just going to skip this and it's going to check oh there's an else statement oh okay they're going to do that but if we do this is it going to print the first one that says x is bigger than y why would it then print the first one because it's going to say okay so it print this this was true but since there there's nothing else we can just skip this because you know so this will execute if this up here is true this will execute if this up here is false so yeah then we can also have in um, nested if statements so it will be like if and we can say um, y is the same as x print actually x is the same as y but this will anyways not execute because if x is smaller than y then x is obviously not equal to y so that's where the problem comes in because like what is it never going to execute but we need it to execute so you can actually go here and say l if which stands for else if y is equal to x and then we can actually do this so we just said okay if x is smaller than y then execute this if not then if y is and x are the same then execute this. If not either of these two, then execute this. So, yeah. So let's say equal. Then we'll say x is smaller than y, but may. Oh, you know what? That's because we gotta do that. Oh, and um, I kinda got, got confused here. This should be a. Uh, let's, let's make it like that. If x is smaller than y, let's make it x is bigger than y. So right now it's going to print else. So x is smaller than y. If we were to change this to bigger than, it's going to say x is bigger than y. We're going to change that back to smaller than and make y equal to 5. Then you say actually x is the same as y. So it's going to execute that. So if this one is false, then it's going to check if this one is true. If this one is true, it's going to execute it. But if this one is false, then it's just going to go to else. Also, we can do nested if statements. So we can go if, and we can say, um, let's say, if x is bigger than, um, than 20, then we can say print x is really big. So we can actually say x is, let's say, uh, 21, which is bigger than 20. Then it says x is bigger than y, x is really big. And then we also have our bigger than or equal to, which says is, is it bigger than 20, or, and is it bigger or equal to 20. So if we say this, it will still print x is really big. But if we were to remove this, this is going to check x is bigger than y. That is because it's going to check here if... Um, x is 21 or more but as soon as we say bigger than or equal to it's going to check if x is 20 or more so yeah you can just keep that in mind otherwise we can just go um, like something like else or else if and say print um, x is not that big though so let's say if we make this 19 it is not a big bow but as soon as you make x20 again and we're like ah x is really big and if we make y20 then actually x is the same as y and if we make y20 201 for example this is like x is smaller than y of course you can also put your if another if statement here just remember to keep everything indented so if you create an if statement you have to create an indent so here's an indent, here's an indent. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you do this, then the code no longer works because now there's a difference in things you do. 
So yeah, so now we're gonna do that. It's gonna be like, wait, what? Because now here's an else else if statement right after the else statement. You cannot have an else if statement after an else statement. Just just take that as a note. So yeah, so the, yeah, so everything inside of this if statement will then be executed, and everything inside of this if statement will be executed. So yeah, just remember this indentation. That's the thing I want you to remember the most. And then you have the not equal to. So let's just clear this because this screen is getting a little bit clustered. So let's say x is equal to 20 and y is equal to 21. Then you can say if x is not equal to y, uh, not equal to 7, not equal to y, then print hello. Ooh, print hello. You do that, it prints hello. But as soon as we make x the same as y, it says it doesn't execute the code anymore. So this is basically the opposite. This right here is of the opposite of doing this. And not equal to. Then we can do another thing. So let's just add these here. And then you can say and. And we can do something like x is bigger than, and let's say, 10. Then if we do this, uh, let's just make x uh, or like, like 10. It says hello. But as soon as x is 10 itself or smaller than 10, it's not going to execute anymore. Because it's going to check, is this true? And is this true? So if either one of these two are false, it's going to skip this line of code. But if you only want one of these two to be true, you can do or instead. So then it will, it's just going to make y smaller now, then it will execute st it still. But even if we, and if we say and right now, it's going to be like, e, yeah, both of them, not both of them are true, so you can't really say anything. So if we make this 11, then it's going to be like, hey. And then we have not, so if not x is bigger, or is not x is not equal to y, which basically says this. So, um, not x not equal y is the same as x equal equal y. They're the same. So, just, just, so not basically just does the opposite of what they tell us here. So, we can make this 11. It will run a hello. But as soon as we remove the not, it will not run hello. And if we make this something like 10, it will not run it either. So yeah. So we can actually go if not false. So this will say if true. And it will say hello. And then say if we can even go here if not. Then it will be like any can't go. We can also do this and we just add another bracket there. Remove this not and add another bracket here. And now the whole thing is covered in a not. And it says hello. So yeah, that's using a not and an and and a not equal to. You can also do something such as um if not false and this will just say if true. Same by if you can go like um if not 10 bigger than 11. So if 10 is not bigger than 11, then execute the code. So yeah, you can do that. And uh, yeah, so then we just have a few extra things. So let's do a bit of words before we continue to the next one. So if not um, A bigger than, uh, let's say, capital A, then print hello. I print hello because A is not bigger than, ca than lowercase a because capital A is 65 and lowercase a is 97 but if we were to remove this not then it's going to be like a hey, you know it's not true so then there's another way to do an if statement which is a little bit more complicated but it's a one-liner so you can say print hello world if and we can say uh, 10 is bigger than 2 then, if we go like this, sorry about that, let's just, 
and then we can just go um, else print loop and if we run this we get hello world so the thing here is it your if statement will always need an else just remember that that's the first thing I should tell you it will always need an else and this is a one line so you only need one line for it so what happens is it says print this but only if this is true otherwise print this so it's a one liner it's a bit a bit more complicated but you know you can also do this uh, you can say uh, y is equal to zero uh, then we can go here and we can say uh, y is equal to 20 and in here we can say pass or not pass uh, we can say uh, y is equal to 10 so in here we can go um, uh, print y I need to say uh, otherwise you can just say 10 there we go like this it says 20 and as soon as we make this a bit bigger then it says 10 now what happens here it says basically make y equal to 20 but only if 10 is bigger than 20 otherwise make y equal to 10 so that's basically what this says so yeah that is the if statement uh, the one liner if statement isn't that important for you to know about. You need to know more about the multi-line if statement of the if statement, else if statement, and the else statement. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and see you all in the next.